It's Monday, is it? <laughs> Apparently. I had to check the calendar and ask the dog and everything. <laughs> he wasn't too sure, was he? Uh, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Um, so, recommencing our little mini-series on ADI theory test questions that have caught some of you out. So... This is acting as a bit of a revision for those of you who perhaps your uh, part one was a distant memory. But of course, for those of you who perhaps have recently um, uh, applied to be driving instructors and are currently working towards your part well, one. Or even thinking about it, just give you an idea of... I think the main thing we're trying to get across is, is do your homework without being patronising. and Don't just answer the questions and learn them <coughs> by rote, which is another question that comes up. Mm -hmm. Um, is by actually understanding it, look the different publications that information is in, get used to these publications. And today's one is an example of another publication that yeah. you can find stuff in, isn't it? So it's about broadening in your, your horizons to where this information is. Yeah. So today's question uh, that has caught some people out and we've been asked to, to look at is how a driving test for a disabled person may be different um, and there are a couple of different options. Of course, the correct answer is going to be in there somewhere with the multiple choice um, options that you have. Uh, but it includes um, being extended, um, being um, having manoeuvres that are specific that they can do, that kind of stuff. Um, and the person that sent this to me genuinely didn't know. And this came up in his... Sorry, I was going to give my cup of yeah, coffee no, my to place. my husband. Um, uh, didn't, know, didn't know the answer. So, um, as we have said in previous days, this is a good book full of disability kind of information. So that is the uh, Drive Instructor's Handbook. You may well find some information in here. But the publication that we're going to push you to today is the DT1. Now, the DT1 is the Examiner's Guidelines for Carrying Out Driving Tests. So, um, if we look at what uh, that says, uh, bear with me when I find the correct answers. So the DT1 um, has a little section about physical disabilities and it says in common with other applicants, um, applicants for uh, driving licenses, those who have a physical dis disability have to take the test of competence to drive. The test requirements are generally the same so, um, as no non-disabled candidates and the same test documents are used. In addition, the examiner must complete a report on the um, form D. Two five five. So the examiner has extra paperwork to complete, and that's basically the crux of why they need an extended test. So that's the answer. They need an extended test. So the time allocated for the test. So again, this is in the DT one. Uh, more than one test period is normally allocated for an L test for a disabled person because of the extra documents involved. Extra time is allowed uh, for candidates who are deaf and without speech or who have. Uh, declared a severe degree of deafness, so not just a physical disability as such, it could be um, a hearing issue. If a candidate in one of these categories fails to declare their disability when um, applying for the test, only one period will have been allocated. The test should, however, be conducted and the documents being left for completion later in the day if necessary. So those are the examiner's um, guidelines. Um, when they mean an extended test, they basically mean a double slot. So two slots would be allocated yeah, not to a that longer, examiner. As in driving test, not like an extended one for yeah. if you've got your six bands or something like that. Is it? yeah. It's just to allow time. So it could be that it takes more time for the person to get from the waiting room to the car, for example, and get in and out of the car and things yeah. like that. So it just gives more time so there's not a rush going on and you can just take it leisurely, really. Yeah. But the actual test itself is exactly the same yeah. as it all would be. As, you know, minimum 32 minutes or 37 minutes overall with the same number of questions, the same number of manoeuvres. All that stuff's the same, isn't it? It's not any different. Yeah. 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 The only time that is different, I think we touched on this um, last week in one of the questions, is if somebody's physical disability meant that the car had some kind of adaptions on it. So let's say, for example, somebody who had uh, a mobility issue and was not able to be twisting in their seat. Mm. Um, oh, we are, we've got a delivery arriving. It's ours, isn't it? um, It's ours, yeah, so we'll finish this <laughs> before, the, <laughs> before the dog goes mad. We're sitting in the car watching um, a, a parcel being, um, being delivered. Um, so if somebody had a mobility issue, and they had extra mirrors, for example, so that would be classed as an adaption because they may well not be twisting their head to look in certain uh, places. That would go down on their licence as an adaption and they would only be licensed then, of course, to drive a car that had those particular adaptions. Not the same as a physical disability that doesn't need anything else with the car necessarily, um, or, um, uh, but is, is including the, the extra paperwork the examiner has to do. 
Um, I hope that's useful. We will see you again tomorrow. And Blaine gave you a hint about what tomorrow's question is. Tomorrow we'll be looking at um, learning styles. So there's a question that comes up about rote learning. So we'll look at that one. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.